There are certain careers where making mistakes in calculations or having a bad day can lead to frustration and even financial loss. But being an architect means you have to get everything right all the time because mistakes lead to deaths. Here are 10 of the most famous architectural disasters in history. Number 10. When an earthquake with a magnitude of 6.4 struck Taiwan in 2018, it toppled four buildings, killing at least 17 people and injuring hundreds more. The reason for this seemed to be that the lower floors of some of the buildings were severely damaged by the earthquake, which caused them to collapse and caused the structures above to lean to the side as the support beneath them would disappear. The problem with shaky foundations is that they don't always just affect the building itself, especially when it happens in a densely populated city in Taiwan. When a building tilts so dangerously, it moves the surrounding earth as well, which causes a kind of knock-on effect beyond its own footprint. For example, if this building falls, it will probably knock out the one it crashes into as well as cause unseen damage to the foundations of other buildings. These are not the only considerations when considering the damage on the surface. Tragic natural disasters do occur when an earthquake strikes, and sometimes there is nothing that humans can do to prevent the worst of the effects. In areas where earthquakes are frequent, engineering may be the only thing separating humans from the most powerful forces that nature can unleash. Before we go on, be sure to like this video and hit the subscribe button. Number 9. You may already be aware of how cold winters can be in Moscow, where the city experiences up to six months of snow and ice every year. Therefore, it shouldn't come as a surprise to hear that snow will likely be present on rooftops for a significant portion of the winter. In February 2006, 66 people lost their lives and 33 more were injured when the whole roof of Moscow's Bozomani market collapsed early in the morning. If the incident had occurred a little later in the day, the death toll would have been much higher because the market would have been open and bustling with shoppers. However, it appears that the disaster could have been avoided if people had paid a little more attention and noticed that the 30-year-old building was looking a little worse for wear. The victims of this tragedy were mostly migrant workers from Azerbaijan and other nearby countries who worked and lived in the market. Investigations conducted after the disaster came to the conclusion that the collapse was caused by years of improper maintenance mixed with the weight of the snow on the roof. To be honest, this is just a horrible event. Number 8. After everything was said and done, the architect of Boston, Massachusetts's John Hancock Tower may have felt a little guilty, as the skyscraper was notorious for having falling windows, and when it grew windy, blocks had to be closed around it. This is an uncommon but deadly condition that gets its name from the possibility that a wind gust could break a pane of glass and send it hurtling toward the ground. Just take a look at that building. It was made up primarily of 10,344 glass panes, but the problem was that there was no way to determine which ones were most likely to break free. As if having random windows fall from the sky wasn't bad enough, the Hancock also had issues with being especially shaky up on the building's higher floors. Because of the swaying, several tenants would complain of motion sickness, but all of these issues would eventually be resolved. Engineers were able to implement a fix in the building's sway as well. The windows all needed to be replaced with tempered glass and altered to allow them to bend a little bit rather than crack as they had previously. Amazingly, they counteracted the building's motion with a smart device known as a tuned mass damper, and now the Hancock is regarded as one of the safest buildings in the world. Number 7. On a Sunday, the Kimber Arena in Kansas City hosted an architect's convention, and everyone there was impressed by the building's design. But by Monday at tea time, the building had lost its roof. In fact, the architect in charge of the highly acclaimed arena was present at the convention, accepting an award for the design of the very room that would be without a roof the following day. Honestly, you couldn't make this stuff up in the movies. A storm that produced several inches of rain in a short period of time would have caused the roof to collapse. I'm not sure, but in a region that experiences frequent tornadoes and old storms, building a roof that can withstand even a small amount of rain might have been a priority, but then again, architecture isn't always the most sensible or practical discipline. Fortunately, no one was hurt in this particular architectural failure. In Canada one Saturday in September 2006, the overpass on the Boulevard de la Concorde, which is located just outside of Montreal in Quebec, Canada abruptly fell. The part of the highway completely collapsed in an instant. People had noticed that the road's integrity appeared to be weakening, therefore in the days and hours preceding the tragedy, there had been reports of issues. I'm not an expert in building roads, but if it appears that your overpass has some enormous holes in it and people are complaining that they can see through them, it might be time to have a look. 
The massive cave-in resulted in the tragic deaths of those unfortunate people who were traveling in cars below when the overpass collapsed and crushed their cars. Numerous other people also fell with the section as it broke off. Subsequent investigations revealed that the incident was caused by multiple issues that all came together to create a terrible mess. The De La Concorde overpass was supposed to last for about 70 years when it was designed and constructed in the early 1970s, but it only made it halfway. At the time, however, there was not nearly as much traffic or as much use of the road as there is now, so it appears that the overpass simply wore out. Number 5. This bizarre location resembles what happens when you build with Legos and don't get a sturdy enough base. We've all experienced it. However, you would think that people building with life-size bricks and actual homes would have a better understanding of how engineering functions. Fortunately, this 15-story apartment building near the Lotus River in Shanghai, China, was empty when it collapsed. The building collapsed in one piece, looking like a giant simply pushed it down. The windows and balconies were all intact as the building tipped itself completely horizontally. One construction worker would die, though it's amazing that that was the only fatality in this extremely large mistake. Investigations conducted after the incident revealed that the foundation had been unbalanced by excavations for a nearby underground parking lot, putting too much pressure on it and causing the entire thing to collapse. The speed of construction on some building sites in China is frequently held responsible for the lack of quality control in the building industry, and in this instance, there was no way to hide the error unless you had an exceptionally strong sales team that could convince buyers that their apartments were intended to be on their sides. Number 4. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge Collapse is a legendary event. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge was originally designed to be supported by some massive strong trusses in order to reduce any kind of potential swaying, but the powers that be decided that these would be too costly so they settled on a much less sturdy system of girders, a cheaper and more elegant design. This amazing footage from 1940 shows the amazing scene of the bridge blowing in the wind like laundry drying on a wash line. It has since become an example of how not to build a bridge. However, engineering typically has to be based on laws of physics rather than aesthetics, and even during construction, the bridge's problems were evident. The workers nicknamed the structure Galloping Gertie because it would often move around uncomfortably in windy conditions. Ultimately, the wind created a kind of vortex that caused the structure to twist and flap in a way that no one really wants to see in a bridge, especially when they are driving over it. Number 3. The social housing tower block in Newham, East London, United Kingdom, was constructed in the 1960s as a part of the post-war rebuilding scheme aimed at addressing the country's chronic housing shortage. Regretfully, governments continue to demonstrate that standards for social housing are not always the highest to give residents the safety they deserve. In the case of the Grenfell Tower Fire of 2017, which is currently the worst disaster in social housing history, modern government negligence would result in a catastrophic loss of life. But before that, there was Ronan Point. On May 16, 1968, a woman named Ivy Hodges turned on her kettle for an early morning cup of tea. This caused a gas explosion that blew out the walls of her house and started a devastating progressive collapse of the building's corner, taking down floor after floor of kitchens in the 22-story tower block. Only the early hours of the day, at 5.45 a.m., would prevent more than the four recorded fatalities, as most people were still asleep and had not yet entered their kitchens. The Ronan Point building was outrageously brand new. The disaster demonstrated that, even though there was a gas explosion on this particular occasion, the building's design flaws could have resulted in a collapse at any time, even a strong wind could have brought it down. The Ronan Point disaster would prompt inquiries into social housing regulations and the introduction of higher standards, but as we all know, these places are frequently neglected by the government and the lives of their residents are put at risk on a daily basis. Number 2. The Aon Center, also called the Standard Oil Company or Big Stan, is one of the city's tallest skyscrapers at 83 stories. It was completed in 1972 to great acclaim and was considered an architectural pioneer in the 1970s. Big Stan's steel skeleton made the building extremely strong and able to withstand high winds and pressures that are unique to such tall buildings. However, the architects of the building wanted the enormous tower to have an amazing appearance as well, so they decided to use 43,000 marble panels for the building's cladding, which would make it stand out among Chicago's well-known cityscape. In addition to being extremely beautiful and shining like the buildings of ancient Rome, marble is also fairly heavy. During the first 10 years of the large stand's existence, it was discovered that all of the marble panels on the building were failing and could potentially collapse at any time, posing a serious risk to anyone wandering below. 
At that point, the building's owners realized how dangerous the situation had become and took immediate action. The 43,000 marble pieces would need to be replaced with granite, which would be a huge job when the temporary straps holding the crooked slabs in place were installed. It may sound impossible, but they managed to complete the task without having to shut down the structure. Number 1. Water shortages during the early 20th century's massive growth were a major issue. Enter William Mulholland, chief engineer and general bigwig of the Los Angeles County Water Works, who had overseen the plans for the St. Francis Dam, which would create a reservoir outside of Los Angeles. The dam would be completed in 1926 in San Francisco Canyon, but problems arose before it was even filled. Cracks and leaks were obvious, but due to a tight budget and limited time, Mulholland was willing to take some shortcuts. In this case, even though Mulholland declared the St. Francis Dam safe, it collapsed at around midnight on March 12, 1928, causing billions of gallons of water to flood down the valley and a 140-foot tall tidal wave that destroyed towns, destroyed homes for thousands of people, and killed hundreds upon hundreds of people. Mulholland, well, as a bigwig, was undoubtedly innocent of all charges, but his career was gone, yet his name continues to be honored on well-known streets and buildings in Los Angeles to this day. Are you too afraid to go downtown now? Let me know in the comments section below and also have a look at some of our other videos that are showing up on the screen. I'll see you in the next one.